Part 2. Crimson Flower. Guardian Moon. The Master Tactician. Having crushed the Alliance's army and captured the Great Bridge of Murden, the Imperial Army prepares to attack Deirdre, the Alliance's base of operations. Professor, what is your opinion of Claude? I can't help but wonder what sort of impression he made on you. That much is obvious. He acts like a fool, but still manages to make the impossible happen. That's as true now as ever. He's managed to protect the Leicester Alliance with his cunning alone. Since the beginning, territories within the Alliance have been split between those who support the Empire and those who oppose it. Claude has been acting as an intermediary between the two, essentially keeping the Alliance pacified. As both sides are of equal strength, he's created a situation in which they've all agreed to avoid fighting each other and causing undue bloodshed. By carrying on as though the Alliance is united, he's minimized the Empire's influence there. <laughs> it's quite impressive how well his bold scheme has worked out. However, he is walking on thin ice. One wrong move and the Alliance will shatter. Speaking of Claude, Your Majesty, we should not delay in our invasion of the Alliance. It would seem that Claude has some fresh scheme up his sleeve, to no one's surprise. Is that so? Yes. The people of Deirdre have suddenly found it difficult to leave or enter the city. We can safely assume he is preparing for battle. But I am certain his plans extend beyond that as well. Do you not think we should take Deirdre at once? Deirdre, the aquatic capital. A city floating on the ocean certainly poses a challenge. Since it's deep within Regan territory, we haven't had the opportunity to attack it directly. However, now that we have control of the Great Bridge of Murden, our situation has changed drastically. They can no longer expand their supply line into the Empire, and so we can finally attack Regan territory. House Regan is not only Claude's house, but also the flagship of those who oppose the Empire within the Alliance. If House Regan falls, the other Alliance lords will be tripping over themselves to join us. That is why we cannot fail to take Deirdre. Confidence is one thing, Professor, but see to it that you do not underestimate Claude. The leader of the Alliance has had many things said about him. They say he is unbeatable in a battle of intellect. I hear they call him the Master Tactician.
were rather quiet in the last battle, Caspar. Not a single war cry to be heard. It was almost as if you weren't even there. I did it just for you, Hubert. Isn't that what you wanted? Weren't you the one who said my shouting would cause problems? Yes, I was. And at the time, you seemed intent on ignoring my advice. Well, that was then. Recently, my behavior caused trouble, just like you said it would. I was shouting the other day and some enemies heard. I pretty much gave our position away and left us open to attack. I mean, it turned out fine in the end, but someone could have died if things had played out differently. Anyway, I did some self-reflecting and realized that I probably shouldn't shout so much. A decision that I'm proud to say I came to all on my own. <laughs> all on your own, huh? It was a bad decision. Being too quiet on the battlefield is extremely dangerous. I'm sorry, what? That's the exact opposite of what you said before! Having seen you fight in silence, I have no choice but to accept the truth that your shouting is vital. What in the world are you talking about? We've all grown used to the way you fight. Your battle cries help morale. And your instructions rise above the din of battle. I would go so far as to say that the soldiers under your command would be lost without the guidance of your booming voice. I really don't get you, Hubert. You inspire people. The benefits of your shouting outweigh the risks. Something wrong? Don't get too excited. You'll be ambushed again. Then I guess I'm gonna have to fight some guys while shouting! <laughs> that might have been the wrong approach. Oh well. No cure for stupidity. I suppose I'll just have to rein him in myself. <laughs> That song. Oh, hello, Edelgard. Professor Manuela, that song you were humming, I feel as though I've heard it before, long ago. And I'm sure it was you singing it back then. At the Opera House in the Imperial Capital, perhaps. Why, yes. You must have seen me there. I am flattered you would remember it. I performed with the Middle Franc Opera Company in Enbar on numerous occasions. So it was you. I went to that performance with my uncle. I wanted desperately to see it again. But after that night, he took me to seek asylum in the kingdom. When I returned to the Empire several years later, you had already retired. Oh, that's a shame. So you only got to hear me sing once? Sadly, that's correct. Yet... You still remember it, even the melody of the song I sang. I'm honored. That's how much of an impression your voice left on me. I must ask, why did you retire so soon? You could have continued for another 10 or 20 years. Indeed, many singers perform for decades. But that wasn't for me. I wanted to go out on top. My voice is a gift from the goddess. However, as all things do, it will decline with age. One day, I will lose that gift. And so I decided I needed to learn to survive without it, long before that day came. I needed to prove to myself that I can live on, even after my voice returns to the goddess. So despite your belief in the goddess, you wish to live by your own strength? It's hard for me to explain. The goddess supports me both spiritually and emotionally. Everything else is up to me. I can't believe it. How can I show my face to Lady Edelgard after this? 
That's what you get, Hubert. If you rested like me, you wouldn't collapse from exhaustion. As much as it pains me to say it, you're right. But to be looked after... by you, of all people... That might be the worst part of this. I don't know how to feel, to be honest. So for now, let's pretend I thanked you. Oh, come now. Even I wouldn't abandon someone who collapsed. You would have in a heartbeat if anyone else had been around. Ah, yes. Quite accurate, Hubert. Why would I ever bother to be a decent person if there were anyone else I could foist the duty upon? If your situation turned bad, it would have been an absolute hassle. I could never just leave you there. If that were the sort of man you truly were, we could never be friends. <laughs> but if we weren't friends, I probably would have just left you. Shame you're so reluctant to do any real work. You're actually pretty good at this. Make sure I was comfortable, checked carefully for injuries, even carried me here yourself. If only you'd apply that knowledge of yours so proactively and thoroughly all the time, you'd be a tremendous asset to the Empire. There you go again. I see no problem with staying just the way I am. But think of it this way. In an anthill, 20% of the ants are asleep at any given time. And it's not because they're lazy. Far from it. When the working ants become tired, they go to sleep and the others wake up. That's me. I'm the ant who rests so I can work later when other people are tired. Maybe that's true. But even if it is, it's still just a fancy way to say you let others do all the work. Consider me unconvinced. I'll consider you a bother and leave it at that. You and Edelgard work far too hard. I mean it. Take a break now and then. If you both collapsed, I think it'd be too much effort for me to bother with. Get some rest, Hubert. Not as much as me, of course. <laughs> Fine. How did you know Dorothea was an orphan? I hear she buttered up some noble and he enrolled her in the academy. She's higher ranking than us lot. Huh. How disappointing. I suggest ignoring them. <laughs> Lynn, don't scare me like that. You seem less scared than surprised, but that's quibbling, I suppose. As for those two gossips, unimportant. I suggest forgetting all about them and their petty words. Join me for a meal. I've been the target of a lot of gossip, and eating generally makes me feel better. Don't pretend we're the same. If I could brush it off so easily, I would. It doesn't seem particularly difficult. Where's the problem? Is this about your pride? No. Not even a little bit. What then? Lynn, please just... go away. I want to be alone right now. That's fine. But your life is your own business. It's not something that can be affected by the petty words of a stranger. Ah, sorry. I kept talking, didn't I? I'll stop now. Please do. Good morning! The weather is nice today. So, um, it's, uh... Really nice weather we're having, isn't it? Indeed. Did you want something? I just... I, I'm really sorry. I can't accept your apology until I know what it's for. Oh, good point. I'm sorry I said you were terrifying. Is that all? I'm used to that. No apology necessary. B but you've been avoiding me since then, right? You even stopped doing your deathly grin. I am merely trying not to frighten you. Is there something wrong with that? Um, it's not working. And yes, there is. You can't quit talking and laughing just to try to make me feel better. 
That's not really fair. I need to master my own fear. Is that right? Yes. R right. <laughs> You told me not to forego laughing, so I laughed as hard as I could. Is it helping to conquer your fear? Yes. I mean, someday it might... maybe... Ah, I'm not ready! Crimson, maybe? May I suggest Vermilion instead? Vermilion? I know, I see it. You don't have to say it. I've got no talent at all. I said nothing about your talent. I simply suggested Vermilion over Crimson. Do you know Vermilion? It's just a softer shade of Crimson. I believe it would. Don't oh, forget it. This is your artistic vision, and I am but a meddler. I am going to read my book and leave you to your art. Um, no, it's fine. Say what you want to say. It's good advice. I'll use Vermilion. Thank you. Well, I'd best be heading back. Phew! Finally done! I think. All finished? Everything looks a bit faded, doesn't it? Ironically, Crimson may have been a better choice after all. The sense of distance on the petals is a little strange. Perhaps you should pay closer attention to such details as you paint. A preliminary sketch would do wonders. Still, it... Oh, forget my pedantic comments. You really do have potential. <sighs> Bernadetta? Hopeless! Waste of charm! Just burn the whole thing, Bernie! Break your stupid brushes and never paint again! Huh. Perhaps I should have kept my thoughts to myself. Hunting? Really? There's no way I can do this. Goddess, why couldn't I have stayed in today? Bernadetta, is this a trouble you are having? I heard that the duty to hunt is yours today. The, the duties all got assigned while I was holed up in my room. Do not be worrying. I can show you the way to hunt well. Oh, um, okay then. When you see a beast, you are thinking of it as an enemy. That is how prey thinks. You must think of the beasts as food. That is how the hunter thinks. So, it's not an enemy, it's food. But, um, how is it food when it's still alive? You pick the vegetables from the field. Those have life too. It is the same. You take a blade in your hand and take the lives of the vegetables. You cut their stalks and harvest without mercy. They do not scream, but you are still their killer. Fruit ripens and falls to the ground. The seeds sprout, and a new life is born. That is life's cycle. It has cruelty, yes, but you must end life to eat. You must be killing to be living. Maybe, but I don't know if I want to be some... some kind of vegetable murderer. It is the same for rabbits, deer, pheasants. The only difference being that they cannot cry out. You must do what you must do to be living in this world. It is your task. A task? Yes, just a task. A completely mindless task. Feel it. There, in the grass. Prey is moving. Just like a vegetable in the wind. Give it an arrow, just like you would give a vegetable a blade. It is just your task. Uh, right. That makes sense. It's just like cutting a stem. You are now a hunter. 
You have learned how to hunt. I am? I have? Oh, good! What a relief! You have understanding now, I can tell. Great! Leave it to me! I'll hunt down my prey just like their vegetables! I have belief in you. Aw, thanks, Petra! I can do this! Make way for Huntmaster Bernie! Have luck, Bernie. Dorothea, something's been bothering me. I kind of feel like you act more casually around me than you do with other people. Casually? I don't know what you mean. I just feel like you're always asking me to do things that might make other people uncomfortable. Like when you asked me to clean your room. You're not very flirty toward me like you are with the other guys. You seem weirdly comfortable around me. Hmm, you pay more attention than I would have thought. Hey, are you interested in me? You know, interested interested what uh no i um it just seemed weird and i was curious <laughs> i'm kidding it's true that i do find you quite a convenient little helper at times it's like you're how to put it you're like a little brother to me oh uh, really that's not exactly a compliment no but it's true and now that i've thought about it i like the whole idea why don't you try calling me Big Sis and see how it feels? No, no, that's not gonna happen. Why not? I'm embarrassed just thinking about it. Oh, come on. It's just a goof. You can manage it at least once, can't you? <laughs> Please? Oh, I know. If you do it, I'll stop using you for my chores. How's that sound? That's... an enticing offer. Fine. Once. Sis. <laughs> well done, Caspar. You're such a cute little boy. I'm proud to have you as a sibling. I'm not cute, and I'm not little. How would you feel if I made you call me Big Bro? Oh? Well, I wouldn't mind that at all. Big Bro. Is something wrong, Big Bro? Oh, this is the worst. Claude's earned himself a rather colorful nickname. He does whatever it takes to win. I like that. It will be especially satisfying to defeat him. I can't wait to see what his next move is. Do you ever regret taking the path you did? I guess doubts and regrets just come with being human. Whatever path you choose going forward, I'll follow you without question. To tell you the truth, I used to be a knight of Seros. But at some point, I just couldn't follow the Archbishop anymore. I ran away in secret, and decided to join the Imperial Army. When I found Alois here, it made me feel much better. It meant I'd made the right decision. Ever since that day you disappeared, the Archbishop has been completely different. She started laughing as if she was possessed and spouting complete gibberish. <sighs> Yeah! 
If I live, I fight. This is the cost of war. I will see this war through. Time for pity. like. I'm not sure if I ever knew. Oh well, he's just another enemy now, isn't he? What? Am I not supposed to say that? to call Claude the Master Tactician? I want a nickname, too. Maybe I'll get one if I can defeat him at Deirdre. I'll come up with a plan that'll beat his and earn a nickname for sure. when we win battles, and I'm always relieved when our friends make it back safe. On the other hand, it's hard to watch the enemy die. Even worse when it's someone you know. <sighs> Perhaps it would have been better if I'd just stayed with the opera. You're right, Professor. I'll never regret the choices I've made. Now you just have to lead us to victory, so everyone else can let go of their regrets too. Dare Drew, the aquatic capital. I've heard it's a magnificent city, you know? If we're going, I wish it wasn't to wage war. It'd be more fun to visit with a cute girl on my arm. Yeah? Maybe you and me? That'd be a good reason to survive the war. <laughs> Travel east from the Alliance and cross Fodland's throat, you enter the land of Almyra. House Goneril's territory touches the eastern border of the Alliance. They also have Lord Holst, the most valiant warrior in the Alliance. Tasked with keeping watch over the Almyran's movements, he rarely leaves Goneril territory. Hmm. I 
have been wondering something. If I had not been your student, where would I be right now? Who would I be? Do you ever think about that sort of thing, Professor? I see. You are so focused and cool-headed. I wish I could be more like you. get so fired up. Better keep an eye on him. Oh, sorry. I was just talking to myself. I hear you're heading out to Deirdre. Good luck with the battle. Hey. Okay. Remember the Death Knight who stabbed me five years ago? Of course you do. How could you forget? Well, it turns out he's a general in the Imperial Army. He leads the Western Front against the Kingdom. Once I knew he was at Garrig Mach, I stormed right up to him, told him who I was and what he did. And he offered me an apology. I'm talking about a sincere, heartfelt, solemn apology. What a letdown. What's going on with that guy anyway? Who is he under that mask? <laughs> Lately, the Kingdom and the Knights of Seros haven't made any significant moves. I don't suppose they're going to stand by and watch while we attack Deirdre, though. That's why I've doubled our guard and instructed them to be extra vigilant. I will keep Garrig Mach safe. It is my duty and responsibility. I have learned much of the language of Fodlin, but speaking the Fodlin language still gives me difficulty. I can understand, read, and write with nearly perfection now, but understanding and speaking are fruits of a different color. I have gratitude for you, Professor. I hope that I will have fluency one day. I do get used to the sight of blood. It always makes me feel as if I might faint. I suppose I've told you that, though, yes? I have no idea how you cope with it. I hope this war ends soon. I dislike being lightheaded because other people are bleeding everywhere. It's all a great deal of bother. But I will do my part, of course.
listen. The Gloucester and Ordelia houses have territory in the southern regions of the Alliance. Everyone knows they support the Empire, so they won't get in the way of our armies. Plot, eh? He always was sharp among his peers. Never let himself get caught up in conventions. <laughs> he wasn't typical in Fodlan. Then there's Rhea and King Dimitri. I'd stay on their good sides, for different reasons. Yeah, well, if that's the only way forward, it can't be helped. Professor? Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. Deirdre is known as the aquatic capital. It's a beautiful town with streets that seem to float on the water and an impressive harbor. In times of peace, it would be a wonderful place for a holiday. Anyway, best of luck in the next battle. Five years ago, during the attack on this place, you allowed me to join your side. Since then, I've risen through the ranks, and now I'm a general leading my own army. In this invasion of the Alliance, I've been entrusted with maintaining the supply lines and keeping the Goneril territories under control. That's why I won't be accompanying you to Deirdre. Please look after Lady Edelgard. I could use a hand. That reminds me. Five years ago, most of the people involved with the Church in the Empire moved to the Eastern Church in Alliance territory. I've been hearing rumors that the majority of those have now gone to the Kingdom capital, Ferdiad. The Eastern Church has no military force of its own, so they must be sensing that the Alliance is weak and fleeing. Hello. A hungry hero is no better than a well-fed soldier. Do you know that saying? No? That's because I just made it up. If you're hungry, you're never going to be at full strength. Keep your belly full and stay strong. Cooking? I can handle that. What's the next step? It's easy if I have orders to follow. Sure. While I have little interest in food, I will admit to a weakness for this one dish. I'll keep eating, although I can hardly stomach this food.
right. Do you have time for a request? Hey! Hey! We can't actually join you on the battlefield, but rest assured that we're there in spirit. We're doing everything we can to support the army. So give it your all out there. Turn soon, please. Hey, welcome. Come again. Welcome. Come back soon. Professor. Thanks for your help out there. Battles tend to go smoother with you around. <laughs> I think you did most of the heavy lifting. It may be unwise to think this way on the battlefield. But I feel I can trust your commands without question. Not sure. I might have an idea, but ugh, never mind. I've also noticed that you've been putting me in more precarious situations lately. Almost like you know I won't question your orders. No need. I'm glad you trust me to get the job done. But Still, I knew you were doing it on purpose. You're in a very important position now that you're leader of the Imperial Army. Funny to think you used to just teach at the Officers' Academy. Your old students still call you Professor. That's no title for the commander of an army.
You'll always be their professor, huh? You sure are an interesting one. My people lost the war, and I was left to wander Fodlan alone. But I guess meeting you was my prize. You look confused. Did you not know any of this? I was living in my homeland of Dagda, up until the Imperial Army destroyed it ten years ago. But being a mercenary, I have no real allegiance. That's why I'm working here now. Don't worry, though. I don't plan to turn on you. <laughs> Need something? See you again soon. In order to defeat a formidable foe, you must first learn who they are. How much do you know about the Alliance? The Leicester Alliance unites the feudal lords of that region. It holds regular roundtable conferences where they vote on their policies. However, only the five great lords are permitted to vote. Duke Goneril, Count Gloucester, Count Ordelia, Margrave Edmund, and their leader, Duke Regan. Their titles were originally granted to them by the royal family of Farkas. About 300 years ago, the Alliance was still part of the Holy Kingdom of Farkas, you see. Well done, Professor. Thank you. So, we've somehow managed to take the Great Bridge of Murden. That means House Gloucester should now be ready to join the Fold more... formally. We've blown a major hole in Claude's plan to preserve the Alliance. We should press on to Deirdre, before he has the opportunity to adjust his strategy. I have a request for you. I wish we could settle all of this before the fighting begins, don't you? I wish it dearly, but few others feel that way. They fight in a bloody battle, take countless lives, and then finally come to understand defeat. They refuse to admit when they're beaten, and they keep it up until they've been utterly defeated. Of course, I understand that sacrifice is inevitable. But if they're going to surrender after being defeated anyway, why raise a weapon in the first place?
Nothing worth celebrating. I I'm in I still Technique never betrays. You're, You're a good per I have to ask. Hmm. That's an interesting answer. Professor. This should be easy enough. We did it and without incident. The battlefield has much to teach.
Is this necessary? I'll sing if I must. Not sure I should sing with everyone. I'm not great at harmonizing. What's the plan? I'll cut a bloody path. More fighting. Or die. A fine display. Ready for anything. I do this for all of us. I will prevail. I'm improving. I admire you. What's my strategy?
No time for pity. your own risk. The results speak for themselves.
my stage now. Feels like fighting is all there is. Until we meet again. I'll follow your example. Yeah. Back to the fray. is critical. You knew the odds. No turning back now. demands it. Not my goal, but a means to an end. Sweet of you. Everyone. For Bridget, I find strength to carry on. 
play. Just stronger. I sense an improvement. All is going to plan. I'll use this power for the greater good. More fighting. <laughs> Only thorns left on this rose. I do this for all of us. What's the plan? I'll cut a bloody path. We will burn together! Her will demands it. It is all for Her Majesty. Amazing. I'm awake.
I'm ready for anything. This is the cost of war. I'll take all the strength I can get. Put me in there. What's my strategy? I must lead them well. Strength is all for a mercenary. Watch and learn. Fine display. Well done. No time for pity. If I live, I fight.
Winning is what matters. I'm impressed. Back to the fray. Burn until we meet again. Her grand ambitions. Not my goal, but a means to an end. I was right. Ooh. Ooh. 
was not. I still need to improve. Professor. Our results speak volumes. Now, to put this skill to use. I think I got it. I'd never have learned this back in my room. Thanks. I'm glad I asked you. But speak. Hmm. Well, I've never then there's right. Yeah, well.
This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Welcome. Come back soon. Unbelievable. I figured I'd have a look at how the kingdom is holding up while I was on the road. So I took a trip up north despite the cold. But the borders were closed on every road. I wasn't even able to get into the kingdom. Every crossing point was guarded by grim-looking armed soldiers. It was all very imposing. Hey there! Come back anytime. Professor? Hey. The Alliance troops were nothing to turn a nose up at. They were pretty strong and brave, too. Our next target of attack is Deirdre, the Alliance base. Better stay sharp, even if we do have superior numbers. <sighs> Remember that well, once any offered what's going on? I'm getting the hang of this. Hey there. Hey. I have. If I. Do you ever think about that sort of thing, Professor? I see. This experience is critical. Didn't I want to maybe I'll come up. So, we've somehow managed to take the Great Bridge of Murden. That means House Gloucester should now be ready to join the Fold more... formally. We've blown a major hole in Claude's plan to preserve the Alliance. We should press on to Deirdre, before he has the opportunity to adjust his strategy. This experience is critical. So we've that means we've blown him. We should press. I'll take it. Whoa. 
I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Well done, Professor. Thank you. Let's do that. I'll make good use of this power. See how this works. Show them this letter. Threaten them. Do what you must. Now go. Yes, sir. Hubert, that letter... Is that what I think it was? I suppose there's no denying it. But Edelgard... Explicitly forbade me to send it. Yes. I know. I cannot believe it! You disobeyed a direct order? I thought you were her loyal aide. Unwaveringly. All that I do, I do for her. I seem to recall you expressing a similar sentiment. It is our role to guide her when she is on the wrong course of action. Is that not what you said? You are not supposed to do it in secret. When you disagree with your leader, you must voice your concerns directly. Otherwise, what is the point? The point is the same. Lady Edelgard's best interests are served whether she knows it or not. She needs not trouble herself with the mundane details of my actions. Only results matter. You are sorely misguided. When I believe that Edelgard is making a mistake, I tell her as much. Through discussing the matter, I sometimes find that I was mistaken. To skip that process, to make a decision that is not yours to make. Perhaps your advice is simply useless then. Excuse me? Listen to yourself. If I do as Lady Edelgard requires, then you tell me to be more independent. But if I tread my own path, I am misguided. I suppose the fault is mine for expecting any useful advice to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Ugh, I have had enough of your grousing. To think, I started to believe you were a useful aid. <laughs> Gardening with you is a lot of fun, Lady Edelgard. I feel the same. You know so much about it, Bernadetta. I looked after flowers a lot back home. I like them. They don't talk, they don't get angry, they don't hit you. And they're sweet. They are sweet. 
Unlike people, they can all be trusted on sight. You're sweet too, Lady Edelgard. I mean, not sweet, but, um, you know what I mean. You can talk or you can get angry all you want. Well, I'll strive to avoid getting angry. You're really kind. I'm less scared of you than I used to be. Most nobles are terrifying. I've had lots of bad experiences with them. But getting the chance to talk to you like this makes me glad I came to the monastery. I'm glad too. You made quite a few friends at the academy, didn't you? I had heard rumors about the reclusive daughter of House Varley, but you're nothing like I imagined. Rumors? About me? Uh, uh, just pretend you didn't hear anything. <laughs> There's no need to be embarrassed. Rumors are meaningless. All that matters is the truth. You're right. I'm not really a recluse now anyway. Not since I came to the monastery. I won't let the rumors bother me. I'm happy to hear it. Actually, I should thank you. Thank me? What for? Wait, do you mean you need to thank me for all the times I've made you mad? You do, don't you? That mind of yours, no, I mean the grateful sort of thanks. Before I met you, I was more prone to anger. But now, I've changed in that regard. So, thank you for that. Oh, I suppose you're not listening. Oh, I'm done for! Five years worth of resentment is about to crash down on me all at once! Ah! It's okay, Bernadetta. I'm thanking you, not attacking you. Oh, um, I jumped to conclusions again, didn't I? You did, yes. But don't worry about it. Enough talk, don't you think? Let's take care of these sweet little plants. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bernadetta, I hope you'll keep spending time with me. Of course I will. Hey, look! This flower's just about ready to bloom. <laughs> so it is. I can't wait to see its true colors. <laughs> I have been watching you in secrecy, Edelgard. But you and Hubert were noticing me, correct? Well, if you intend to shadow us like that, you can be sure it won't escape our notice. Hubert was primed and ready to... remove you. I ordered him to stand down. You have my thanks. I have been making a decision that I am wanting to learn from you. I was thinking it was enough to be shooting one bird with one arrow. But after speaking with you, I trained with hardness. Now I can be shooting two birds with one arrow. Two pheasants? Are you implying that... Yes, a single arrow. That's astounding, Petra. Hmm. It's perhaps a bit late to explain now, but what I was getting at earlier was actually... <laughs> I am having a joke. You... come again? I really was shooting these birds with one arrow, but my joke is that I did have understanding about what you told me. I took it to my heart. Did you now? You are a person with great bluntness. I am admiring of you. As an emperor, a commander, a warrior, and a friend, you are excelling at all that you do. All of the Empire is resting on... on your shoulders. And that is including Brigid, too. I will not be falling behind you. I will be carrying Brigid on my shoulders, too. And one day, you and I will be facing each other, and we will be shaking hands. <sighs> <laughs> yes, that much is certain. I can see that you no longer need me to look out for you. You and I are much the same. We dutifully shoulder our burdens and stand tall no matter what. It would be foolish of me to deny it. Your words give me great joy. And it also gave me joy to see you being flustered when I was showing you the birds. A cheap trick to be sure, but inarguably funny. To think that you went to all the trouble of shooting two pheasants at once for the sake of a joke. <laughs> well played, Petra. We both are growing every day. I hope we will keep doing so.
Hey there, Hubie. I've been thinking about our conversation the other day. And I've just got to know, do you really love Aidy? If it's one or the other, I suppose it would be closer to love than to hate. Why? Ah, uh, I knew it! That's why you work so hard for Aidy. Oh, Hubie, I finally get you. You're just another servant suffering from unrequited love for their mistress. <laughs> you completely misunderstand. Unrequited love. Do I really look like the kind of drooling simpleton to have that kind of motivation? I'd like to say yes, but I know you just argue. Fine, Hubie. Tell me your situation. My situation is simple. I am walking a path. Oh, do go on. Everyone has a path in life. Lady Edelgard has shown me mine. It is just beside her own. So we walk together side by side. We stride ever forward, yielding to nothing and to no one. So... you're sharing the same dream? <laughs> Bluntly, yes. But it's more than just a shared dream. I have many feelings toward Lady Edelgard. Gratitude, respect, Awe, empathy, trust, hope. Okay. I was teasing you, but I gotta say I'm just a little bit jealous of you and Aidy. That you're able to embrace these feelings and stride forward along the same path. You're lucky, Hubie. I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to experience anything so utterly... operatic. Why not? Because I figure the best quality in a partner would be that they make me happy. And loving another is really about wanting to be loved. I'm pretty sure that's different from how things are with you and Aidy. <laughs> my strategy. fighting.
Only thorns left on this rose. I will prevail. Each battle a victory. No matter what, I will not misplace my heart. I do this for all of us. Yes! A great help. Ready for anything. What's the plan? the odds. I need to put this to use. I'll cut a bloody path. I'm awake. Don't bother haunting me. Need to pull my weight.
Your death is not in vain. My ambitions are within reach. This is the cost of war. I'm continuing. until we meet again. This is my stage now. Maybe it's better this way. Makes threat. And I'll keep getting stronger. Yeah! Thanks for helping. Stop. 
I do not tolerate obstacles. <sighs> Guess I need to train harder. Thank you. Let's die hard.
Progress didn't require so much work. Can I use this off the battlefield? Back. For the 
paint a folder. Strategy. Another victory. Follow your example. I will prevail. With all of my might! Oh! Witness Bridget Pride! For Bridget, I find strength to carry on. More fighting. <laughs> Winning is what matters.
Will this ever end? All this power just to survive. Keep up the momentum. Hardly worth the effort. Harder. Just like that. Your death is not in vain. Only thorns left on this rose. Father haunting me.
fight makes right. It's almost time to depart. Are you ready? A promising answer. Whatever happens, never allow your foe to see any weakness. We must pay close attention not only to Claude's schemes, but to the man himself. He's a master archer who wields the legendary bow, Fail Not. He won't fall easily. It's the relic of House Regan. That bow once belonged to one of the ten elites. Professor, do you know the true story behind the legend? The relics were created by the hands of mankind. Saros collected them after killing the ten elites. Saros manipulated the people of the world and defeated the all-powerful King Nemesis. The church maintains the false history that he was corrupted and turned evil. However, it was little more than a simple dispute. Should the one leading the people of the world be someone with humanity, or a creature that can merely masquerade as a human at will? In the end, Saros was victorious. The Immaculate One and her family then took control of Fothar. I know this because that knowledge is passed down from emperor to emperor. And that is because the first emperor is the human who cooperated with Saros, allowing humanity to be controlled in secret. Perhaps it's fate that you can wield the sword of the creator, just like Nemesis, the king of liberation. And that very fate will lead you to use that sword to stand against those who would distort history. It seems they've set out from Garrig Mach. That's sooner than expected. Losing the Great Bridge of Murden was a serious blow. So is the fact that Teach is still alive. On top of all that, Judith. I told her to run if things look grim. Damn it. So many people will die, and by my call. And what of it? Would you rather turn tail and run back home? Nadare, you're really getting on my nerves. Do you have any idea how much of the Alliance adores me and believes in me? Well, I suppose it's quite a lot. Does that mean that... Yes, the plan is a go. I'm counting on you, Nadir. We'll make a good show taking down those who would assault Deirdre. <laughs> People say our kind may not always win, but we never lose. Let's teach them the real meaning of those words. Now then. Let's see what you're made of, Teach. Thank you so much.
Felix, he's coming right at me! If I run, he'll chase me. Maybe if I just hold really, really still. <sighs> Ahem. <sighs> Whatever it is, I didn't do it, I swear. Unless I'm offending you just by standing here. No, here. I believe this is yours. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's my satchel. Wait, where did you get that? Stop asking questions and just take it. No! Trap! It's a trap! Why are you acting like this? Acting? Does this terror on my face look fake to you? You're being difficult. Come on, this is yours. I can't! Your icy glare has frozen me completely! Shut up! Just take the thing! No! Please don't kill me! What? Who's going to... Sword! He's got a sword! <laughs> My sword! How did you... I can't do this anymore! What an odd girl. She's certainly caught my attention. I've never seen that technique before. 
No. I still have to give this back to her. Hey, Felix, you free? You don't look very busy. Let's go find some girls to chat with. Chat with them by yourself. You're interrupting my training. Hey, come on. Don't talk like that. How long have we known each other? Long enough, if you ask me. We only know each other because of our parents' friendship. I didn't have a say in it. Is that how it went? Huh. I remember it more like you always following me around. Whenever there was something wrong, like you lost to your brother, or you fought with Dimitri, you'd come crying to me. You were so meek and pure back then. Cute even. Like a baby brother. And that's enough. What? I said that's enough! Hey, sorry. I just came to see if you wanted to pick up some girls. I didn't mean to get on your nerves. Look, you've been getting on my nerves for years. I've tried to be patient with you, but I'm tired of holding my tongue. You're reckless in your personal affairs and in battle, and you're always prattling on about women. Well, if a man sees a pretty girl, he can't just let her pass by without commenting. That's just rude. You're insatiable. Do you ever stop? Certainly not to practice your sword technique. You always skip training. And you never consider how your actions hurt others. Or how you hold them back. That's never my intention. Come on. Y you know me better than that. I'm not really... Look, if that's the impression I've given you, then I'm sorry. Hmm. North of the Great Bridge of Murden, the Imperial Army passes through the Allied territory of House Gloucester and invades the land of House Regan which leads the opposition. They move to attack Claude in the capital, Deirdre, where the leader of the Alliance awaits their arrival. Here she comes, at long last. I've done all I can to prepare. Let the cards fall where they may. It'll be a true test of strength. It seems Claude has blockaded the city and occupied the naval port. <laughs> if that is the case, he will have no choice but to engage us from there. Yes. Though putting myself in Claude's place leaves me with an unpleasant feeling. 
If we take over the port and close the entry to the city, Deirdre will be under our control. Each soldier should bear that in mind as they advance. There are three gates which connect Deirdre to its naval port. Taking the city will be easy once we secure all three. my strategy. Ready for anything. For the Empire! What's the plan? I'll cut a bloody path. Put me in there. I do this for all of us. More fighting. Let's clean up. I will prepare. I'm awake. Now it's our turn, Almira's elite. Strike the flanks of the Imperial Army. Those fangs and claws the Alliance fears so much will now be their salvation. Leave it to us, kiddo. My undefeated streak will live on. Another chapter in my heroic saga. That flag and banner. Is that the Almiran army? Ugh, you really did it, Claude. This is no ruse. That is Nadir, an Almiran general. Take care of them quickly. Especially those Almiran wyverns. This could turn the tides. Are here as well, Professor? That is a shame. It's over. <laughs> That's the last of my energy. If you're gonna kill me, make it quick. Fair warning, though, I'll likely come back to haunt you. It's not like I've had an easy time of it after all. to join you? The Alliance is over no matter what. The only thing left is to place faith in you and Edelgard. There's still so much I have to accomplish. Thank you for the second chance, Professor.
fight makes threat. And I'll keep getting stronger. Well done. I owe you one. No time for pity. Myron reinforcements keep coming. We should try to eliminate Nadir. An encouraging display.
win or die. It's starting to feel like a part of me. Amazing. Live, fight. You didn't forget about me, did you? Maybe you should just let me go. I will not let down my guard. Why didn't you retreat? I counted on you retreating. Did you think I'd let you go?
Stronger than before. Burn until we meet again. Ready for anything. Bridget, I find strength to carry on. A 
waste of time. It is all for Her Majesty. Thank you. Is that it? <laughs> Feels good to fight for our cause. I'll grow as strong as I can. Another victory. I 
will see this war through. I am not well pleased. Seems simple enough. Strength never betrays. for our future. You're making me look bad. their numbers.
will demands it. We don't have the guts to resist anymore. Here, you can have this. Just please don't attack the city. I never planned to touch the city. Our target is the Alliance and their leader, Claude. This could turn the tides. I sense an improvement. It's been 30 odd years since I first set foot on a field of battle. Here's a taste of my undefeated strength. Don't think less of me for this.
obvious. The Emperor continues fighting at the front line. Is the Empire short on troops? Unfortunately, I can't deny it. But then I've heard the Almiran King does the very same. You have traveled far. I do hope it's for a king who would not only lead his army, but fight at their side. Touche. Yes, he is that sort of king. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. It seems we'll have to withdraw. <laughs> Ooh. You've done enough, Nadir. Just stay alive. We'll meet again one day. We have forced the Almiran forces to flee. I doubt they're expecting more reinforcements. Well done. Oh! 
Appreciated. Follow your example. Teach. You should have chosen me instead of Edelgard. No point in whining about it now, I suppose. Sorry, but I'll be taking the win today. <laughs> Enough. You've bested me. If I die here, the Alliance becomes part of the Empire. Do you yield then? You've never known when to give up. Well, I can't just surrender so easily. I'm responsible for the others. If you're as smart as you seem, I bet you figured out why I was able to summon Almira and reinforcements. Wouldn't it be better to let me go and have me in your debt? Thank you, Professor. And you, Edelgard. I'm truly grateful for your courageous decision. I will return your kindness one day. I promise. Everybody, raise your voices in a victory cheer! Deirdre is ours! Hey, Teach. Claw. Settle down, will you? You're the victor, after all. I could have escaped, but I decided to say hi to Teach. Nothing to worry about. Deirdre has fallen and the Alliance has collapsed. There's nothing I could do to turn things around at this point. You want me to drop my guard around someone who evaded detection by my soldiers? Impossible. Did you really risk coming here just to say hello? I did. But mostly, I wanted to say goodbye. I'm leaving Fodlan. Lend you my... <laughs> I knew I liked you, Teach. I dare say Fodlan would be a lot more peaceful without me around. Right, Your Majesty? It's as you say. So long as you remain here, the faction of the Alliance that is against the Empire will continue to support you. Too true. It's best if I leave this place altogether. I'll just have to find some other way to pay back my debt to you. All I ask is that you go easy on the Alliance. After all, no one there would dare defy you now. And please, treat my former classmates well. I've asked them to cooperate with you if I lost. Wait. Did your scheming include a plan for if the Alliance lost? <laughs> uh, you think too highly of me. It just seems that way now. 
Outside of Deirdre, most of the Alliance is unscathed and ready to join your superior strength. In all honesty, I was hoping to become a supreme ruler and lead Fodlin to peace myself. But that won't be happening now. Claude. Good luck to you, Edelgard. We crushed him in battle, and yet... Uh, he really is difficult to understand. Lady Edelgard, Deirdre is now completely under our control. As planned, the Alliance's affairs will now be overseen by Count Burglis. My father is coming here? First west, then east. You sure keep him busy. Should the others return to the monastery and prepare to face the kingdom? Yes, thank you, Hubert. Thanks to all of your efforts, our battle with the Alliance has reached its conclusion. However, we still can't afford to be careless. We must now join the battle against the kingdom. With the strength of the church on their side, they will prove to be a formidable enemy. More than ever, your support is invaluable. We'll need it in the days to come. But for now, let's enjoy our triumphant return. Let's get to it! I'm so happy that the end of the fighting is near. Too bad there's still more violence to come. The kingdom and the Church of Saros are worthy for fighting. I will crush them into very small pieces. Crushing wouldn't yield a lot of pieces, but I guess it would get the job done. With the Professor, we can't lose. Probably. Oh no. Are we fighting Lady Rhea? But she's scary. And she'll be really angry. But no way she can stay in her spooky beast form all the time, right? If she could, she would have come and attacked the monastery as many times as she wanted. It may be wishful thinking. But perhaps it is a power that she can only access when the situation is dire. But whether she is the Archbishop or the Immaculate One, we cannot be stopped. Half remains, but half is finished. We are certainly moving forward. <laughs> no one can stop us from pushing forward. No one. <laughs>